Hi, I'm Jacqueline Peng and this is The Evening Highlights. Arul Kanda, the president of 1MDB, has agreed to a live TV debate with DAP's Tony Pua. But there's just one condition, Pua must resign from the Public Accounts Committee, which is probing the fund. This morning, Pua had challenged Arul to a televised talk show to disprove all allegations against the beleaguered state fund. But Arul fired back in a statement that Pua has to quit the PAC first. Otherwise, it would mean be a conflict of interest, he says, as Pua would be the judge, jury and executioner. Pua spoke in the parliament lobby later in the day. He thinks Arul's demands are ridiculous. It does not make sense at all. Why is Arul Kanda a servant relative? You can consider him a public servant because he is the president of a wholly owned subsidiary of the Ministry of Finance acting with such contempt as to demanding that a member of the Public Accounts Committee be removed from that committee. It is outright contempt for the PAC and the Parliament. Veteran Amno man Dato Sri Nazri Aziz is on Arul's side. Ah, very simple. He must get out from PAC and then debate. Lah. Because PAC is investigating. How can you, you debate when you're still a member? He was also dismissive of Pua's claim of contempt on Arul's part. One MDB is being probed by several agencies for purported financial irregularities, including fund transfers allegedly involving Prime Minister Dato Sri Najib Raza. The Naga National took quite a hit from the weaker ringgit. Its fourth quarter net profit fell nearly 40%, while revenue was flat from the previous year. The utility giant says net profit plummeted to 821 million ringgit as the ringgit lost its ground against the US dollar and the Japanese yen. Revenue was pretty much unchanged. For the full financial year, net profit edged down 5% to 6.1 billion ringgit. Revenue rose just 1.2% to 43 billion ringgit. Electricity sales were still up, however, thanks to higher average power tariffs. It maintained its dividend payout of 19 cents a share for the quarter. On prospects for its next fiscal year, TNB says it is cautious given the impact of global economic slowdown, including declining commodity prices and the weaker ringgit. But power demand growth is expected to increase with the expansion in construction, services and manufacturing sectors under Budget 2016. TNB shares closed 0.6% lower at 12 ringgit 66 with a market cap of 71.7 billion ringgit. DBKL will be selling the land on which Plaza Rakyat was located to Profit Consortium Sundrian Berhad for 740 million ringgit. Profit Consortium is a privately held company linked to major retired Anwar Adam who controls Tatmax Corp. According to Federal Territory Minister Dato Sri Tengku Anand Tengku Mansor, the SPA will be signed tomorrow. He says 700 million ringgit is the outright sale of the land. 40 million ringgit is for the company to resolve issues with 211 buyers who bought business lots there 20 years ago when the project was launched. Plaza Rakyat was abandoned due to the economic downturn in 1997. EPF says it's a little cautious about predicting this year's dividend payout despite being on track to achieve its targeted return. This is because the recent sharp downturn in the market and commodity prices. CEO Dato Shario Ridza Rizwan says the payout will depend on the fund's third and fourth quarter performance. Given where the markets have moved uh, since uh, the middle of the year, um, I think you know uh, we would be cautious about trying to make any kind of prediction uh, for the year as a whole. Um, and certainly, I think you know uh, we've always been very transparent. You know, uh, once we release our third quarter results and our fourth quarter results, I think then you'll have a clear picture or better idea um, of how the year will turn out. EPF is targeting return at inflation plus two percent this year. In the first nine months of 2015, Malaysia's inflation averaged at 1.9 percent. Last year, dividend payout stood at 6.75%, the highest rate since 1999. 
It has been a challenging investment landscape to date, especially with the FBM KLCI falling substantially since the start of the year. The ringgit, meanwhile, is at a 17-year low. Despite this uncertainty, EPF Chairman Tan Sri Samsudin Osman says the fund will continue with its long-term investment strategy. Our whole uh, policy has always been conservative and, uh, and to do uh, investment uh, within our rich appetite. 50% of the EPF's investments are in fixed income, while equities make up 40%. IHH Healthcare is going to open its 14th hospital in Malaysia. The 400 million ringgit Glen Eagles Medini Hospitals in Nusa Jaya, Johor will have 300 beds. Glen Eagles Malaysia CEO Dato Amir Abdullah Fidao says the medical facility will help boost Iskandar Malaysia's attractiveness as a regional medical hub. The hospital will have five centres of excellence. It will lease 138 medical suites to private medical practitioners who wish to set up clinics within its premises. IHH is the world's second largest listed healthcare operator by market cap. It owns Parkway Pantai, the largest private hospital operator in Southeast Asia, and the International Medical University in Kuala Lumpur. And that brings the evening highlights to a close. I'm Jacqueline Fung. Thank you for watching.